Today we are confronted with the uncomfortable reality of death. Our friend Peter Dawson has died, and his death reminds us all of our own mortality and of the shortness of life. All of us go down to the grave. And yet, at the same time, we are reminded that death is not the end, but it is a beginning, uh, a beginning of a new kind of life. Through the mercies of God, we are given the hope of eternal life. Life is changed, not ended. Our friend Peter Dawson was born in England in 1942 during World War II. He came from humble roots. His father was born on a farm, became a, a wheelwright, and then a, a furniture repairman. His mother was a bus conductor and a subway attendant. And when Peter was three years old, about in, in 1945, uh, their house was destroyed by one rocket that was uh, sent from. Uh, England during the, the bombing of London. And so uh, everything they had was lost and had to find a new house. And Peter was given a, a small a stuffed donkey. Uh, and he kept that donkey all his life. And um, uh, we, we, it was found in his possessions uh, by Megan and Andrew. Uh, so we have it here today. Uh, a memento of something that happened a long time ago and I'm sure made a big impression on Peter's life. After Peter finished high school, he went to a technical college and learned how to be a machinist. Uh, he was a talented machinist. He was an apprentice tool maker, but he got bored. He told me he got bored and so he uh, signed up for the Merchant Navy and, because he wanted to see the world. And so for many years, he was uh, on a ship traveling to ports throughout the world. And as he uh, traveled on the ship, they taught him how to uh, be a ship's engineer. And he learned quickly. He worked for United Fruit Company, and they uh, delivered fruit all over the world. Uh, later on, he got a degree in engineering, and he became a port engineer and was ultimately responsible for the maintenance of entire ships. So he grew a lot in his career and, and in his life. Uh, Peter was a machinist. He loved machines and these powerful engines that are made up of uh, finely machined uh, metal parts. Uh, Peter knew how to operate a metal lathe. Uh, he knew how to get precision down to a thousandth of an inch. You know, some people just have a feel for metal. It's as if uh, they can feel in their hands what's going on with metal, and they can make it do anything they want. And that's a machinist. Peter loved Jaguars, the car, uh, and he owned several Jaguars. He loved Jaguars because uh, they're famous for their precision and for their beauty. I think that was what thrilled Peter. Peter met Marty around 1970. He was in Los Angeles um, in the port, and he had gone to the Princess Louise, which is a, a floating restaurant and, and party boat that's moored there in the harbor. And when he was in the gift shop, he met Marty's parents and kind of hit it off with them, and they invited him to have dinner with them. And at dinner, Marty was there. And so they struck up a relationship and fell in love, and the rest is history. They had uh, many good years together, and I know they, they enjoyed each other's company, and uh, they were partners in all they did. Uh, Peter and Marty lived in San Pedro, California, and attended St. Peter's Episcopal Church there. It was appropriate for Peter's roots from the Church of England and from Marty's roots in the Catholic Church. Uh, Peter and Marty never had kids, but they always had lots of animals. They took in strays, they healed uh, injured animals, and they always had a lot of cats. And when I would go to visit Peter and Marty, I could 
see the uh, portraits of their past cats on the wall. That's how important they were. They were like their children. When the naval shipyard uh, closed in California in 1998, uh, Peter and Marty moved to Silverdale, and Peter worked for a number of years at uh, the Bremerton shipyard and then retired. Um, he was active in uh, car clubs, in the Masons, uh, in the Scottish Rite, and in St. Anthony's Episcopal Church. Um, I think of Peter as someone who liked structure and predictability. He always came to the eight o'clock service and he loved the old Elizabethan language, the these and the thous. And he, he didn't like change, but he uh, accommodated, him, accommodated himself to change sort of grudgingly. I'm not saying he was a curmudgeon, but that word does come to mind. <laughs> he was very loyal. He was loyal to his friends, to uh, his organizations, to his church, and he was loyal to Marty. He was a good man. Peter was born May 3rd, 1942, and he died October 16th, 2021. Those are sort of the brackets of his life. Everything that happened to him happened between those two dates. They mark the beginning of his life and the end of his life. Uh, you know, when we're kids, we memorize the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. And we learn that the first letter of the alphabet is A, and the last letter of the alphabet is Z. And all the other letters come between. And with those letters, you can form the words for anything that you want to say or write. The possibilities are endless. So A and Z are the brackets of the alphabet, just like our birth date and our death date are like the brackets of our life. Our New Testament John is a Christian prophet living on the island of Patmos where he was sent for punishment for being a Christian. And in his exile there, he had a vision of the end of the world and the beginning of the next world. Uh, in this vision, he, he sees all the excesses of Rome and all the splendors of Rome and all the powers of Rome uh, being just crashing down and coming to an end. It's the end of the world for him. But he also sees uh, a new earth and a new heaven. He says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first earth and the first heaven had passed away. And he hears God say, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega. Now in the Greek alphabet, Alpha is the first letter of the alphabet and Omega is the last letter of the alphabet. So saying alpha and omega is like saying A to Z. You know, everything is contained between alpha and omega. So what John is saying is that God is the beginning and the ending of all things. God is from everlasting to everlasting, as the prophet Isaiah said. There is nothing that happens outside of God's time. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. All of our lives have a beginning and an end. Uh, we are born, live our lives, and then we die. And each one of us has an Alpha and an Omega. Every day has an Alpha and an Omega. When the sun comes up, uh, the day begins. When the sun goes down, the day ends. And then the next morning, the sun comes up again, and another day begins. For Christians, uh, we have this audacious belief that the resurrection of Jesus Christ 
has opened the way to eternal life, that God raised Jesus from the dead, and we too shall be raised from the dead to new life after our death. The poet T.S. Eliot in one of his poems said, in my beginning is my end, and in my end is my beginning. I think what he meant by that was that when we're born, uh, we have a limited lifespan. Uh, we're going to die at some point. But when we die, that's not the end, but it's a beginning of another life. Uh, it's a beginning of our new life with God. In our end is our beginning. So today we offer Peter into the hands of God, believing in the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the never-failing love of God. Amen. So now is a time when uh, we can share um, stories or memories about Peter or Peter and Marty. So I invite you, if you'd like to share something, to come up to the lectern. I also have a... a a memory from uh, Eileen, Aileen, uh, that I'd, I'd like to read as well.